my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, like, video, that thing. Oh, oh, that hurt. Sorry, I just had surgery on my back. And like, I didn't realize how interconnected your back was to any, I mean, that's a stupid statement, but like, it's like when you all of a sudden have like an ear infection and then you're like, oh my God, why is it tied to everything? That's what I'm at. So um, yeah, wanted to talk to you about the books that I read this week. I was an absolute kind of waste of space for the last few days, to be totally honest, just trying to recuperate and I'm still not totally feeling up to it. But I needed motivation for some reason to like get out of pajamas. So that is what this is. So um, I wanted to tell you about the books I read this week. I read really well, like pretty consistently up until my surgery. And actually did read on the day of my surgery in um, my room waiting for surgery, but I've been kind of just slowly like picking up a book for a couple chapters since. So I didn't read as many as I would like to have read this week, but like I kind of knew this was coming. So the books that I read this week, let's talk about them. So first off, I read The Five by, I think it's Hallie Rubenholden. Um, I got it from the library and there was only like two library copies in our whole like system of like the, was it 160 libraries or something like that for some reason. And there's like 4 billion holds on it. So I couldn't renew it. So I had for like, um, I had it for three weeks, but I got it at the end of like last month and I was like, ah, oh, crap, I can't renew it. I have to frantically read it. So I read The Five. Uh, it just won the Goodreads Award for the nonfiction. And having read it now, I can absolutely understand why. So it is a book about the victims of stalking Jack the Ripper, not necessarily the, the, the serial killer, which I feel like we always remember like the killer and never the names of them. And like, we've been trying to change that note in like just general like news. I feel like a lot of Phil DeFranco is a perfect example of that like he rarely especially if it's like a terrorist attack he won't normally say the actual person's name because that gives them like the glory that they wanted but instead he'll try to emphasize the victim's name so we remember them so I thought that was kind of interesting and I do remember like of the things that I the, the little nits and bits of his victims I do remember it was always like they were like either female prostitutes either like active at the time or like just assumed to be because England was super poor at the time and women didn't have many options so I didn't know a ton about them so this chap this this book takes these like women and like gives them their due diligence and explains like their situation their upbringing and takes away all of the stuff like added in the newspaper because a lot of it it talks about the fact that it's just added in because the newspaper has their own perspective or people with the, the writer that of the article has their own like vendetta or their own opinion that they just insert um, and then there's always these people who are like, oh, well, my second best friend's third time cousin once saw this person and tells this whole life story. And it, it's like, well, you didn't know this person. How the heck am I supposed to take any of this? With but we always incorporate that crap into these books about these women. So instead, we took all of the historical information explaining maybe why women ended up in the situ situations that they did, um, the people that have said like, no, they actually weren't a prostitute. I've never seen her interact in any way like that. And everyone who does say that they were a prostitute didn't actually know them. So I thought that was really interesting. It also talks a little bit about substance abuse, which was rampant at the time. When you look at just the, the economics and the demographics of England, especially, um, it was just mass poverty. And then trying to deal with housing, which was just a whole other issue. And then women not being able to really necessarily divorce husbands. And like, it was, it's just a whole thing. It was fascinating, incredibly fascinating. We got lots of different economic perspectives, different upbringings, um, and kind of different endings. So I thought that was really interesting that we focused on the lives we always know this other stuff but focusing on that how did we get how did they end up in that situation to get there um and i just thought it was incredibly fascinating a really fresh perspective and i can't imagine the amount of effort it took to get the primary resources um and then look at all the newspaper clippings and then try and piece out of okay well where did this come from because this isn't anywhere else where the heck did this come from this is from nowhere else when so much was being written about the murders at the time it's absolutely insane to me how much effort this must have taken so i really really highly recommend you take a read i think if you're not super into history it can be a little bit dense sometimes but as a history lover um a lot of the information i knew it but you don't actually like incorporate you're like okay i know at this time period there was a lot of poverty for this class but then like actually pulling it and incorporating it and attaching it to a person makes it a whole lot more understandable and i like that we've shifted this narrative to try and remember these women as something other than prostitutes because even nowadays 
we like to like pretend oh it's nothing really big an issue because the victim was a prostitute or victim was on drugs or whatever like that we love to just like just not think about it because they weren't like ideal citizens who smack newspapers for reporters on the ass and then they're like oh but i'm a good member of the community then i read uh lovely war by julie berry this was a fantastic read and i'm so glad i haven't done my video for favorite reads of the year i already put my graphic in the tbr and beyond group favorite reads of the year and i'm kind of annoyed because this would have been on that graphic i have no idea what i would have pulled out of my top 10 but Lovely War by Julie Berry was absolutely one of my best reads of the year. It was fantastic. I absolutely recommend listening along with the audiobook. Um, the There's multiple narrators and we kind of switch back and forth throughout. It's not totally linear time-wise, but we focus most of our time in World War II. Um, but we also have the perspective of these gods going through a court case, essentially, um, in kind of connection with the humans alive during World War II. And there's a couple different coupled pairings. Um, and one of them I was really happy that we that it was touched on is a mixed race relationship at the time. Even in World War II, we're always like, oh, then people sent to war. In Canada, we don't even pretend, like acknowledge the fact the whole like average person getting sent to war versus like when we made indigenous people go to war. It's a whole thing in Canada and it's just finally starting to get um, some looking into um but then again too of we still had like segregated like military barracks um so the main female characters are kind of um they work for i can't remember if it's like the salvation society or the y ymca so they're there for like wreck activities near the base to try and like keep the soldiers morale up and all that stuff um and then we interact with a black band who are there for the, in the black barracks and they start interacting with each other which is not kosher um and then one of the main females uh her boy toy um is in active um duty right now so they go from england to paris and there's this whole like just misconnection sort of story it's wonderful i absolutely love the things that it tackled the how it tackled it um i loved loved that we had these the court cases with the gods and how it was tied into it was just so good i love julie berry stuff i'm going to work my way through her, her back catalog um i'm currently picking up the passion of dulsa hopefully i can finish it next week and she's one i'm just going to watch for i just absolutely love her writing i love the character she she gives um the settings and then she still she's has such a skill at balancing developing the world the conflicts and the characters they're always seem to be likable um and I, I just got really attached to these characters, which I knew was a horrible idea. It's set in active France in World War II. Should never do that to yourself. <laughs> but I really, really, really loved these characters. The book overall was just fantastic. Definitely one of my top 10 reads of the year. So you can see that definitely on my top 2019 reads video that's going to be coming up. Then I did a reread of The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. It's been like a year, a year and a half since I read this. I have my pre-order of The Dragon Republic, which came out like six months ago um still haven't gotten to it but i wanted to reread this so i could remember what the heck happened because a lot happens at the end of this this book like makes you like just question an awful lot and like revenge versus like when is revenge right to take and just a lot of those sort of gray area questions and peoples i love the cast um they're not all likable but i feel like they're all really good characters and they all play a role in some capacity our main character is it's uh, pulled from uh, Chinese history influences for sure. Our main character is from a poor farming community um, and her adopted parents um, sell opioids in the community. And so she wants to take this test that essentially shows your, your IQ, ex that you're extremely smart and you get sent to school to be training and to be a bigger better part of the community so she's it she sees it as a way out of the situation with her adopted family um she tests and she ends up at one of the schools so that happens to be when she learns all of the different things that maybe she she was taught things in her farming community that are taught to the peasants to keep them appeased and at, at where they are right that we we tell people what they need to know so that it's a confirmation sort of bias right rather than real history so she's going to school and she starts having to unlearn everything that she learned in order to pass the test and then has to pick like an affinity essentially um for a teacher to kind of help her specialize in that also happens to be when um some cold war situations turns into a hot war and we learn a lot about the country places history 
and that everyone doesn't always have um, the best of intentions for their countries, I guess is the easiest way of saying it. Um, I love our main character. Rin is, I love her. I really, really love her. She's really strong. I kind of hate, this is the same audiobook narrator who narrated Blood Air, which I hated the audiobook for, and the same narrator who did Stronger Than a Bronze Dragon, which I actually DNF'd that book big reason being the narrator. I'm wondering if the narrator herself is Asian and that's why they keep giving her all of the Asian influences books. Um, there has to be more than one Asian narrator available though. So like, it's kind of frustrating when you're like, could this narrator who is the one that keeps narrating books I want to read, stop it because you're ruining them. Her, her voice is a little bit better in this, um, like the way she accentuates certain things or is a little bit better on the audiobook for the Poppy War um, than it is in Stronger Than a Bronze Dragon and Blood Air. But still, it's it doesn't fit this book. It doesn't fit Rin. She's very, like the gasping and the breath, it's just too much. It, it The narrator would be fantastic for like a soap opera no novel. Not for anything like epic high fantasy with strong independent women. It doesn't suit her voice whatsoever. It's very frustrating that I keep having her very books that I read. Um, but uh, yeah, I love this book though, despite some of the issues with the narration on the audiobook. And I'm really excited that I did reread it because there are parts of it that just completely slipped my mind. So I'm going to be ready to read The Dragon Republic in the next couple days. And the last book that I managed to finish this week was Ten Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This was an arc actually that I got through work, um, but we almost nominated it for the December read uh, in the TBR and Beyond group. It ended up losing to Get a Life Chloe Brown in one day in December, but I was like, I want to read this anyways perfect time of year to do so. So our main character is gets dumped by her boyfriend right at the beginning of holiday season. So she goes to her grandmother's nearby while her parents are with her sister who's um, having some issues with her pregnancy and she's potentially going in to go into early labor. Um, so she's constantly keeping in touch with her sister who she has a really wonderful relationship with, but she stays with her more close local family. Um, and after the breakup, her family decides that they're all going to send her on a blind date. Uh, so the 10 blind dates with people that they love. Some of them go really well. Some of them are disastrous. <laughs> um, you can <clears throat> kind of guess based on who the family member is that's picking them. Honestly, I can't. I think one of the most mind boggling ones for me was she has like these evil cousins named like the evil Joes or whatever. And they pick someone who takes her on one of the creepiest dates. Like, I don't even understand what the hell I would do in that situation. It's so, uh, just... Oh God, it gives me the EBG. Like, it's just don't ever do that. If just don't, that's just like, oh my God. Um, but I liked all of the main cast for the most part. Uh, I don't think I would have enjoyed this necessarily every other time of year, but I liked kind of the general sentiments that getting together with family and everyone has like those, that mixed bag of family that some of them you get along with, some of them that you only see on holidays for a very specific reason. Um, and then just like that kind of family, like over involvement in your kind of life. I kind of love that. And then just her figuring herself out and her really close relationship with her sister. I thought that was really nice. Um, and just kind of getting back in touch with her older friends was also really nice. So I think it has parts that really most people can relate to at some point or another. And it's nothing too deep. It's nothing too, um, you know, thinking or analytical. It's just a fun, nice Christmas contemporary read. So I really did enjoy it actually. And I would recommend it. So on top of all those, I have started The Passion of the Dulce and I am working on Criers more right now. Um, and I did read a little bit more of The Bone Charmer while I was at the hospital. I still have no idea when I'm going to get that done. It is still active and going. I'm just taking my time with it. So those are the books that I finished this week. I will link all of these books in the description box down below. I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back and let me know what you thought of them.